My name is George Duke. I'm a keyboard player, and I've been doing this for a long time. And I actually started playing when I was around seven years old. Well, solo albums is probably 39 or 40. Uh, productions, I don't know, probably three times, four times that much. And records I played on, it's in the thousands. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Uh, I am Eric Zobler. I am recording engineer slash producer. Uh, I make great cappuccinos too. And um, been working with Mr. George Duke for a long, long time. He's been a great client and friend and um, I'm here at his studio. Eric is older than he looks, first of all. <laughs> I've probably been with him uh, since the early 80s. He's the absolute best engineer uh, for me and what I do that is around. I mean, I can't even imagine recording without him. I mean, he just, he knows me. I know him. Uh, it's a great working relationship because he takes a lot of pressure off me. I don't have to worry about that side of the room. I know the recording process will be done well, and I can just concentrate on music. This catalog will allow a lot of flexibility. I mean, because you can time stretch, you can compress things, uh, you can use any piece of anything that I play that you want and, and manipulate it in any, almost any way that you can think of. Plus, the package is very simple. You know, it's, it's not a complex package, so it's something that it should be very user-friendly something that uh, you can get into and manipulate right away, which I think is important, and, and begin to use in your tracks right away. The samples are not all the same. I wanted them to be a little different. I wanted to feel like if we had mined these samples from uh, original recordings. Yeah, I just did whatever came in my mind. It had nothing to do with trying to, to play to a track. I mean, I was just playing licks, whatever the groove felt like I should be doing at the time. The roads here is uh, the roads that I actually used on the road and actually used in a lot of my records, a lot of my recordings. But this has a very particular sound, which is almost like a George Duke sound because it has a little harder edge than most of the Fender roads because of the harder neoprene tips. This clavinet is very special because it's got a wang bar. There aren't many of those, which means you can take it which means you can take it and bend the pitch like a guitar player. So we did a little bit of that on there. And uh, of course I ran it through a lot of effects and, and wah-wah pedals and stuff like that as well. This thing, we actually use two different Whirlicers. This is the newer Whirlicer. I have an older Whirlicer, uh, which is actually, I believe uh, Ken told me it was a 120. I didn't know what it was. It was very old, black and noisy. But there's something about that instrument. You know, this one has a little cleaner sound. The other one has a little darker, woodier kind of sound. And the piano, which you're not seeing in here, is a Bulsendorfer. It's uh, one that I picked out at David Abel Pianos many, many years ago. I went down there and checked out one. And finally, it took about three, four months. Every time they get a piano in, I I'd, I'd go check and say, no, that's not me. Then I ran up on this piano and I said, ah, yeah, that's got the sound I want. You know, and uh, which ha you can play very lightly on it so it can be very smooth. Uh, but when you want to hit it, it's got some B A L L S. <laughs> There's probably enough here for two catalogs. I just played. I mean, I went from one idea to the next. If the loop was playing, whatever was playing, I would play different versions of a similar lick so people could have. They could build off of one type of phrase if they want other time and then I just I stop let it play for another couple of bars and then come up with something totally different. I wanted to make sure I got the vibe. The vibe is what is important. It's what we wanted to get out of these recordings. Clean, yes, as clean as I can get them and for the most part they are quite clean. Um, but there's a few little you know glitches and things in there which is it's cool. You listen to some older recordings and just, there's glitches and things in there. We re reamped the tube and tape version, so I sent it back out into the studio and, um, and then re re mic'd it, brought it back into the console, re equalized it, and compressed it again, and then combined it that way. I, I like the ones that are clean, that sound good, but the ones that are also going through all the tape and the, the 
amplif you know, amplification and the hiss and the yada, yada, yada. That has another vibe to it. And that's what I think was so special about that period, because we did both. We recorded both direct and recorded through speakers. You know, and so the speakers give a whole other idea of what this instrument is about. And I kind of dig it. Actually, we haven't been recording that way in a while. Like a Fender Rose, actually you miking the speakers down there. You know, and I was like, wow, I might have to do that on my next record. It was kind of cool, you know. I I'm really interested to see what comes out of this. <laughs> 